Get ready for your daily dose of marketing strategies and tactics from entrepreneurs with the guile and experience to help you find success in any marketing capacity. You're listening to Marketing School with your instructors, Neil Patel and Eric Sue. Hello and welcome to another episode of Marketing School. I'm Eric Sue, And I'm Neil Patel. And today we're going to talk about what you ought to know about digital marketing before investing in it. So digital marketing, sometimes we get people that have never really done digital marketing and they're looking to, you know, get involved in the space, but they, you know, ultimately you don't know what you don't know. So I would say the first thing that you need to know before you start investing into digital marketing is to at least get a high level overview about what's going on exactly. So, you know, whether that's looking into, you know, there's a lot of great YouTube videos out there. There's, you know, for example, HubSpot uh, put out their inbound 2016 conference videos. There's a lot that you can learn from these free videos out there. And maybe it can be a five to 10 minute video, but you just need an idea of what's going on um, before you lose your shirt. Because the thing is, if you don't know what's going on, people can whatever uh, contractor or agency that you end up hiring um, isn't going to, they're not going to tell you what's going on and then you're going to end up losing all your money and then you're not going to know what happened exactly. So at the very least, you need to at least know, you know, the basics of whatever you're investing into, what the goals are exactly, write those goals down, be clear on what you need to be hitting, what the targets are. That way you can call BS if something bad happens and then you can cut the cord. Otherwise, you're going to get involved in a long-term relationship. You might even sign like a 12 to 24 month contract and then before you know it, all that time is gone and all that money is gone. Another thing that you need to keep in mind before you get into investing is you need to figure out what channel or avenue you want to tackle first. Now, let me give you a good example of this, right? So with my properties, like let's say neilpatel.com, as you guys all know, I'm really big on content marketing. So that's the first thing that I invested in. And it's right. It does really well. It's streamlined. It's grown. Then I started getting into social media marketing. There's so many channels in social media marketing, right? Which channels do you pick first? And the other day, right, we're recording this podcast today is what, December 11, 2016. And as the year is ending, as a business, you have to pay taxes on your profit. So I have quite a bit of profits left, and I'm reinvesting a ton of the money in social media marketing. I'm trying to grow my fan page by the end of the year to at least 700,000 fans. As we speak right now, I'm at 520,000 fans. And when you look at it, I was also thinking, hey, I really want to go big on YouTube as well, especially in 2017 and beyond with doing videos. So I was like, should I take some of that money? I have roughly $150,000 to $200,000 that I'm going to play with to grow my fan page. I know that's quite a bit. And it's just for page likes. I'm trying to get very relevant fans. And I could take some of that budget and also put it in YouTube. But here's the thing. I was actually contemplating this right before we started recording this podcast. If I spread my apples between or my money between YouTube and Facebook and I haven't messed around with Facebook that much, where do you do Facebook ads? But I'm talking about building a community like a fan page on Facebook with a ton of subscribers so that way when I publish videos, more of them see it. I don't know how well it'll work. I've tested the waters a bit, but I don't have enough data on it. So I haven't really played with it too much. When I mean tested the waters a bit, you're talking about a few hours max. So is it really worth me investing all that time and money into YouTube or not Facebook? I haven't tested the waters with YouTube that much. Facebook, I've done a ton. And with YouTube, I've done a lot of paid advertising, but I haven't tested with uh, building that subscriber base, as I mentioned. Now, with Facebook, I was able to take my organic Facebook traffic from my pan page from 44,000 to a bit more than 70,000 to 120 to 140, and now I think I get up to 200,000 visitors a month, right? That's after I stopped spending money on Facebook. I still think I can maintain 200,000 unique or visitors, probably 100 and something thousand unique visitors a month from Facebook. Why would I go and invest that money into YouTube when I'm unsure, when I know Facebook, I could create an ROI, right? So the point I'm trying to make with this story or this little uh, message I'm trying to convey is, Focus on one channel at a time and focus on the things that you know that work. Once you tap them out, then expand. But there's no point in trying to do two, three, four different things. Because here's why. If I did YouTube and Facebook at the same time, my Facebook page won't be as big. Because the more fans you have, it actually creates that viral effect where you just get more and more traffic assuming you're pushing out good content. And with YouTube on the flip side, I've never really tested creating tons of videos, publishing them, seeing what happens. 
So why would you risk splitting up your budget? And that's a big mistake that I see a lot of people make when they're starting to invest in digital marketing. They're like, oh, YouTube's working for so-and-so and Facebook's working for this other company and then content marketing's working for them as well and they're all in our space so we're just going to do it all. You can't do it all. I've been doing marketing for over 14, 15 years or something like that and I know it really well yet I myself am only doing a few channels at once. Why? Because why would you spread yourself thin do every single channel in a mediocre way when you can just do one channel exceptionally well and then expand into the next one and then the next one. And you know what? After a few years, you'll have two or three channels that you've done exceptionally well. And like with the neilpatel.com site, I've been doing uh, neilpatel.com for a bit more than two years now. I only focus on content marketing and then I got into Facebook. So in two years, I've only done two channels exceptionally well, which is content marketing, then Facebook, and I know people can say, oh, your SEO does well, but SEO and content marketing are pretty much the same thing. And then in 2017, the third year, I'll get into YouTube. So then I'll have three channels that do exceptionally well. Don't pick 10 or 20, do one at a time and conquer them and be the best at them before you expand. Yeah, and a lot of people that come to us um, and say, oh, you know, we want help with this, this, and this. We've seen all these articles out there and you know we, we have this uh, set budget. Can we distribute everything out? And building on Neil's point, you know, if you're spreading your budget out, let's say you have ten grand to start with, and you do twenty five hundred across four channels. The thing with that is, if you haven't, if you haven't, you know, figured out the foundation for each of these channels yet, um, what you're doing is you're slowing your growth down. So what's what's happening here with paid advertising, especially, is that with paid advertising, the the more money that you're able to spend up front, the more data you're able to collect, and you're ultimately looking to find that semblance of traction, and then you're, you're going to go all in on, on it, right? So you're going to eliminate the low performers, you're going to go all in on the ones that are performing well. But if you're going across four different channels, your headspace gonna, is going to be distributed four different ways, and then um, it's going to become a lot harder, especially if you're just a one-man team, um, or if you're a very small marketing team. So um, you know, if you have 10 grand to start with, initially... Uh, Ideally, you start with one. You know, a lot of people come to us looking for the the bells and whistles, like the new stuff that's going on, right? You know, the Gmail ads of the world. You know, we want to do video. We want to do all this other stuff. But oftentimes, these companies have not figured out how to go about going with AdWords or figuring out Facebook first when their competitors are doing well in in those areas. So really, the foundational pieces, if you don't have that set up yet, don't try to go everywhere else just because you're seeing blog posts, um, you're listening to podcasts like this one, talk about all these cool things that you can be doing. Um, you know, oftentimes, it's the, the stuff that, that really grows, you know, the overnight successes are the things that take a lot of time. You look at Neil's stuff, it's really content marketing, but it's compounded from what he's been doing from Quick Sprout all the way till now. And if you look at my my previous podcast, Growth Everywhere, you know, after the first year, I stuck with it the whole time, but I was only getting about nine nine downloads a day after the first year. After that, year two, I was getting about 54 downloads a day, so nothing to write home about. And then after that, it started to grow more and more, and then it hit a high point of about uh, 10,000 listens a day. But then that also translates over into doing this podcast too. So everything compounds over time. Um, I would say you know, if you're looking to invest in digital marketing, you have to know that it takes time. A lot of people are they're not patient. You know, they'll say, oh, you know, we invested you know, five, ten, ten thousand dollars, fifteen thousand dollars, when in fact they were getting the traction that they needed, or even they're running a break-even campaign where they could perhaps optimize the back end. Um, a lot of people just they're impatient. They give up too early, um, and you just have to know, like just like with anything else, all good things take time. Yeah, and Eric and I also own agencies too, right? So this may sound weird for you guys, but I wouldn't recommend hiring an agency when you first start off. If you can't figure out how to get initial growth and traction on your own, an agency is just going to waste a ton of money before they figure things out, and they may not be able to figure things out at all. You know your product and service better than anyone else. An agency is used to scale. Don't hire an agency to help you figure out how to make pay-per-click work when you haven't even tried it or how to make Facebook ads work, or how to make SEO or content marketing. Sure, they can help you streamline that, grow it even further, but your business needs traction in whatever channels you want to start off with. I don't care if you're not an expert. You don't have to be technical. You just need to figure out the basics on your own, because if you can't figure out the basics, the agency is just going to burn a ton of money, and they're not going to be able to provide a good ROI. All right, that's it for today's episode of Marketing School. Let us know what you think. Keep coming us to with, with ideas. We'll see you tomorrow. This session of Marketing School has come to a close. Be sure to subscribe for more daily marketing strategies and tactics to help you find the success you've always dreamed of. 
And don't forget to rate and review so we can continue to bring you the best daily content possible. We'll see you in class tomorrow right here on Marketing School.